One thing you can be sure of with a wooden trailer deck is that at some point it's going to need replacing. We purchased our car hauling trailer in the mid-1990s, and this is the first time the trailer has been redecked. Our climate is high Nevada desert. Cold winters. Hot, dry summers. The deck of this trailer has been subjected to weather for 26 years. Bitter winters mean snow, freezing, dampness, and rain. The trailer has always been parked outside. The treated original wood held up for a long time, a testimonial to the performance trailer's quality. Parker builds a good trailer and we're glad we bought this unit. I added the side jack and also the mount for the winch. After 26 years of weather, use, and utility, this wood looks road hard and put away wet. Sheet metal and paint need attention too. Fortunately, our climate is dry and rust free. This trailer has lots of life left in it, but it does need attention. The wooden deck is done. We had considered redecking with metal, but the weight of the trailer would go up considerably. One of the original features that we liked about this trailer was the load net weight and the strong carrying capacity with two Dexter 3500 pound axles. We would stick with wood, but find a solution for making the wood last a lot longer than it did originally. As you can see, the bones of this trailer are good. The structural supports and the overall framework, in our case, are ideal for hauling our Jeep and other vehicles. A skill saw made quick work of cutting up the boards and exposing the framework of the trailer. The side mount jack had the advantage of being able to swing it quickly out of the way, but we never liked that it pushed the trailer to one side as you cranked it up. Restoring the trailer presented an opportunity to install a center post jack. The reasons for keeping this trailer are clear. The suspension and axles have provided an excellent ride and load carrying capacity. With some metal prepping for quality paint, we are getting ready to restore the finish. We have the option of replacing the fenders, but decide to keep the fenders to preserve the original look. A new jack post hole and bolt holes have been drilled prior to painting. A dual action sander made quick work of removing rust scale and paint. High pressure washing precedes the paint. Our paint of choice is Martin Senor water-based industrial coating. The color is safety red. This is a base coat for optimal adhesion. We will apply a second coat. This is a water-based paint that makes for a really durable finish. Utility was our goal. This is not a custom paint finish, but rather one that restores the trailer and gets it ready for the blackwood lumber rubber infused decking. After careful consideration and research, we chose blackwood lumber's rubber infused decking. Blackwood rubber infused lumber adds traction, strength, and durability to the floor of your trailer or the bed of a truck. Great for open top trailers, livestock trailers, truck beds, and more. Blackwood rubber infused lumber begins with premium grade lumber and industrial grade rubber, making it strong enough for commercial applications. Cut to custom fit sizes. Get your trailer ready by removing all slag along the rails. When sized properly, each plank needs to be bent over a stack of wood. The planks have been ordered, cut to length. Use just the right amount of bend to fit the plank below the short lip at the end of the trailer. Heavy duty ratchet straps make short work of pulling the planks together and to one side. Fitted properly, each plank fits to within 3 sixteenths of an inch. Cap at the end slots to even the seams. I use 66 wedge-shaped shims to line up the planks. On a manufactured trailer like this Parker Performance model, I used the lengths of the original planks as a guide for ordering the new planks from Blackwood Lumber. That's the safest bet when determining the correct length of planks for your trailer. Once in alignment, I start at one end. The trailer originally had screws at two angled braces on the trailer deck. I will extend that to five locations, two relatively close on each end and one in the middle. This level of detail is as much for looks as for practicality. 
You want the load to be distributed evenly, and you want the boards to look right when looking down the deck of the trailer from either end. The shim sack not only is spacers, but also can be used to push the boards over slightly. Take your time, move the boards evenly, don't overcorrect, or you'll be going back and doing it over again. I anchored the planks to the second angle brace. This provided two strong supports toward the front end of the trailer. After tying down the planks at the front end of the trailer, I moved to the back and picked the second brace to lay down a second row of anchors across the trailer. Again, pilot holes were drilled with a 732nds bit. Be careful not to overheat the rubber when drilling through the boards. This row of anchoring screws is right in the middle of the trailer. There will be five rows of anchoring screws when the job is completed. Leave the wedge shims in place until all of the screws on the deck are tied down. Four rows of screws are now visible, one at the far front of the trailer, the second row that you see here, the one in the middle, and the one at the second brace from the back end of the trailer. The deck is now tied down uniformly and smoothly over the braces of the trailer. At this point, I lay down the last row at the very back end of the trailer. This completes the tie down anchoring of the trailer deck. At 4WD Mechanics, we're big fans of reconditioning and reusing equipment, tooling, and 4x4 vehicles. This trailer needed refurbishing, not replacing, and the Blackwood Lumber rubber-infused decking will last for decades.